hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode two of Paintings. <laughs> I tried to film this already. Um, I didn't like how my hair looked in the first one, and I also didn't like some of the stuff that I said. So we're going to try this to do this again, right? Um, I'm going to take off my glasses because I think that I will feel a lot more comfortable if I'm not feeling like I'm looking at myself while I'm doing this. Okay, so welcome to episode two of Paintings. On this episode, I am going to be talking about something that has caused me pain and about what I'm going to be painting about. This week, what we're talking about is going to be my chest. So, um, let's get into it. So, I have a scar across my chest. Um, it's about this big, as you see. It takes up the whole entirety of my chest. I got it while I was three months pregnant, and it was a really bad day. It was a really bad day all around. Um, let's bring you back to before. So in 2019, it was the first time I came to Cape Verde. When I first came to Cape Verde, I met my daughter's father. And we like figo colad. Um, we were like glued together. And I immediately got pregnant, like literally in the first time that we had been together, I got pregnant. I went back to America with like two weeks later and I was pregnant as soon as I got there. Um, my shout out to my mom because uh, when I thought that I was pregnant, I asked my mom if she thought I was pregnant and she just like opens my shirt. She's like, sit down. She told me to like sit down on the floor in front of her. And then I sat down on the floor in front of her and then she's like, picks up my face, she's still looking at my face. And then she'll like this. Oh, you're pregnant. Looks at my chest and she's like, no, you're pregnant. Which I thought was mad funny. I go to the, um, I go to the doctor and the next day, um, I was, I was pregnant, right? And then the next day after that, so that, the next day I went and I had, I made an appointment because I got a, um, P test and it was positive. So I made an appointment and I go to a clinic and go have an ultrasound and the next day I lost that baby. So... I decided I stayed in America for a few more, um, maybe like two more months after that. So it was like April, I think it was. Um, so I stayed in America up until June. I was just stacking my money. And I came back to Cape Verde to be with my daughter's father. Um, our relationship, we already had, so very early on in our relationship, we lost a child. And we also had the additional language barrier. So he didn't speak English at all. And I spoke about 18 words of Creole. Um, Creole era in primera lingua. I've always, uh, Creole was my first language, but, um, all I came back to Cabo in Gadafana, I had a good form of Creole. I didn't know how to speak the best version of Creole at the time. So, um, we just had a lot of issues with communication, like just things that I said, the things that he thought, just like I, and I wasn't really able to understand the difference in our thinking patterns because a lot of times that I would like ask him stuff, he would just agree with me. And then like, it wasn't until later on I was hearing him like speak his own thoughts without it like, without trying to speak them to me, that I was just starting to realize, oh wait, you, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna go. So um, I was, I got, I came out to Cape Verde in June. I got here on June 18th, June 23rd. Shout out to Nicole. I got pregnant with my Zofiella. And so I got pregnant right, right after I got back um, from America and we moved into a house right away. I found an apartment that was like a two bedroom, I mean, two bedroom, two floors, house or whatever in Chada. It was like $100 a month. It was fucking awesome. Uh, and it was cool. So we moved into each, move in with each other. We already started like having like a lot of little bickering and like arguments and stuff like that because he became very controlling, didn't want me to like go out. When I was in America, he had broken up with me because I went to like pride with my sister or whatever. So I was already starting to see like, okay, this guy is really just set in his ways. So around September, I was like getting out of my, getting out of the first trimester. And it was like maybe two weeks before September started. I can't remember the exact day. Um, but I remember, I'll always remember the exact day because of what else ended up happening on this day. So um, that morning I woke up and I was, I was just in my third, uh, first trimester still. So I'm like throwing up. I go to the bathroom. Just not feel. I couldn't really hold anything down at this time. And then I went back to lay down in our bed. So I'm like laying in our bed. And he comes up behind me. And he's just 
doing the whole, you know, he wants to have sex thing. And I was just like, no. I told him, I said no. Um, he just completely ignored what I said and just kept, like, grabbing on me and just doing his thing. So I just stayed there. I didn't say, I already had said no one time. He, whatever. So he goes and he's, he finishes. And the whole time that he's doing it, I'm just crying. So I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, or laying there. Or whatever. Then he finishes. He goes out and like he goes take a shower. And I hear him like um, singing in the hallway or something like that. So I get up out of the bed and I was just like, "Yo, hey, um, in so clear flow, ma, in good quality, get up. I can't flow no if I'm if I will escape the man flow no." So I was like, "I just want to tell you, like, I don't like that. When I say no, it's for you to just like accept that I've said no and not for you to continue to go with what you were doing." So then he turns to me. He's like, "Ah." Which translates to all that sex that you had in your life and right now you want to cry about having sex? Um, I was raised in the States, so when people disrespect me, it's just kind of... So that's really what happened. <laughs> um, so he says that and he's like, oh, all the sex you had in your life and I want to cry about sex. So I just, I smacked him. He smacks me back. We have these stairs, because like I said, it's a two-floor house. So we're smacking each other up and down the stairs. Then we get to the bottom of the stairs. Um, he's like, oh, I'm going to leave now. And I'm like, no, you don't just get to do whatever you want and just, like, leave. And I guess, I don't know, I'm just in the, I'm in the midst of everything. I picked up these scissors on the, flo on the floor, the table, somewhere, right next to me. So I'm, like, in front of the, the front door, and I pick up the scissors, and I'm like, no, we're going to talk. And thank you, Pop. Sorry, the baby was crying. So, um, back to the story. Hindsight me definitely knows I shouldn't have um, picked up the scissors. But I did. So, we're here. And um, so, I picked up the scissors. And right next to our front door was a, uh, a chair. Very much similar to, like, this one that I'm sitting in now. Like, a, like an armchair. And uh, so, while... We're, we're in front of the door. I got the scissors in my hand. He goes to snatch the scissors out of my hand. When he snatches the scissors out of my hand, they break. So now I have a half a scissor, and he has a half a scissor. And he's got one in one hand. I have the other in the other hand. We're both like this with each other. So there's, like I said, there's this chair. He goes to push me into the chair so that he can snatch the other this other thing out of my hand. As he pushes me, the hand that he pushes me with is this hand that had the scissors in it. So somehow... Whoosh, like as in me falling down like this he snatches it out and i don't even realize it like it wasn't something that was like um, immensely painful and any, anything like that it was genuinely 100 percent accident it was just him trying to snatch him out of my hand me fall all, all that so um he goes he throws he picks he has his scissors together he throws them across the room like this and then i start walking across the room as i start walking across the room like i'm like i'm walking and then all of a sudden i look down and, like, if you've ever seen, like, the diagram for how breast milk ducks look inside of your chest, that's what it looked like. It looked like the, the segmented parts. And then I just look at it like this, and I'm like, ah! And I fall on the floor. Um, I fall on my back on the floor, and uh, my daughter's father, he's like, he starts panicking. So he's like, I'm going to go to the taxi. He goes, and he's, like, looking down the street trying to see if there's a taxi on that street. And it's mad early in the morning, so there's definitely not any taxis. And then, um... So he tells the neighbor, the neighbor guy to like, yo, Jobet, just like to, to watch me, make sure I'm okay. As he runs to go find a taxi. The neighbor guy was like, oh no, and Kabuti to show us see. He's like, I can't leave you like this. So he goes and runs upstairs in my house and gets like a sheet off my bed, puts me in the sheet, like snatches me in the sheet or whatever. And then like picks me up kind of like in his arms and just starts like running down the street. I guess his, some, I don't know, somebody had a car. He went and brought me to somebody out of the car. They take me to the hospital. So then they go, they get to the hospital. As they get to the hospital, they go and they put me into like a wheelchair. They put me in a wheelchair and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I don't even have clothes on. I'm only, I have like maybe, I no, I have no clothes on. I have no clothes on and I'm wrapped up in this sheet. Um, Cause like I said, we were in the, how the story went. Like I just, I had literally just got up. So um, I had no clothes on and then, um, I'm sitting with this like blanket, like a white, this white blanket wrapped around me. And the guy looks at me, the guy, like the medical guy looks at me and he's like, oh, who's it And I'm like, oh, okay. And then he's like, okay, you fell? Nah, 
if you want to lie, then you um you can set up yourself. Something like that. Like, si vous crée mentir, then no cause de And he basically he's like, oh, if you want to lie, then we're not going to help you. And then we'll And he goes and takes the, the wheelchair from me. So then I'm like, all right. So I just go, um, and I'm just walking. I'm a type of person that, like, in the middle of pain, in the middle of situations, I become, like, very docile. Like, I really don't, I'm not trying to fight you. Anyone that's trying to, like, have any kind of adversity with me, is I'm just, cool. Whatever you want, whatever. Um, so they end up taking me into a room almost like semi immediately and then um they do stitches on my chest the only thing is they didn't use anesthesia so i felt all of each i felt everything i felt the whole thing coming in and out and they kept asking me like oh we know you're lying we know you're lying we know somebody attacked you and i'm like that's not what happened and i'm not about to come tell them my baby father this had anything to do with it because like I'm pregnant, and this is, I'm not trying to get this man to go to jail. We were trying to go to America. I was doing the whole visa process, all that stuff like that. So it was like, I'm not about to come say this, something that can hurt him later on when I know that this was an accident. It was, like, definitely an unproportionate accident, but, I mean, it wasn't done. It's not like he picked up the thing was like, I'm out of duh. Duh, you quit. Like, that's not what happened. So, um... I end up getting me, he comes to the hospital, and we, he takes me home. So when he takes me home, I end up calling my mom. If you know me, I call my mom for everything. I call my mom. I call my mom if I get some new weed. I call my mom. <laughs> I call my mom for everything that goes on in my life. So um, I call my mom. I was explaining to her. She explained to him. Uh, he explained to her what happened, too. And, like, I, she she was just really stressed. I, I didn't really want to overwhelm her that much. So I told her I was, gonna take, like, I was feeling tired. That I was going to take a nap. So I lay down. And when I lay down, I maybe was laying down for like maybe half an hour. My mom called me after that. And she's like, I just seen something crazy on Facebook. And I'm like, what? What did you see? And she's like, your uncle's mom just posted that her grandson passed away. And the uncle that I'm referring to actually made me the godmother of this son. So I'm like, I gotta let you go. Um... It's funny in my life because almost all of the bad things that have happened have also happened on days that something else happened. Like, just a lot of things in my life have always been like that. So, you know, it was a it was a chest wound. And then all of a sudden, I, I call my uncle and I'm like, my mom just told me something crazy and are you okay? And he's like, no, I'm not okay. Um, my son just passed away. And I'm like... So, like, the wound that that was made for my, in my chest, it felt like my, my heart was pulled out of it in that moment. Um, still in this moment. It, it is a constant reminder. Every day when I see my scar, I think of the same thing. I think of my godson. I think of my uncle. I think of my family. I think of, I think of so much. Um, and not only that, it's like, then I, I have to go through the whole healing process and the, the changing process, having the baby and all these things. And it's like... It didn't, it didn't even, it didn't feel fair. It didn't feel fair at all. Um, just the way that life goes, just, it really didn't. Um, this is paintings. That's what I want to be painting about. Um, so, you know, fast forward, I had my daughter. I had my daughter, and me and her father were still together. Um, after having my daughter, my I breastfed, so my chest was consistently moving, like always just looking like a different person. And honestly, to this day, I still have issues with my self-esteem because, like I said, before before I got to this point, I was the, before I got to the point of being in Cape Verde, before I got to this whole becoming a new woman type person, I was the girl that, I was the rebel, a lot of shadow queen, I don't care what anyone says, uh, free the nipple, whatever political statements that are going to ruffle some feathers that fit with my ideals, I'm going on with them loud and clear. And um, just, the, just the lack, or not the lack of, but yeah, the lack of confidence that I have now definitely goes into different aspects of my life. So that's kind of just the story of the pain that was caused for my chest um the physical thing that happened then and what happened afterwards was just like a long like i'm i'm working on it like the other day i was like oh i need to get a new shirt because i want to put a new bra on i need to get a new bra so i can feel like my like i'm giving my chest love because i just 
don't care about my, like my I, I hide myself so much now when I used to be this person that was just like and that okay maybe it's just like I was showing off my boobs in the same sense that I'm doing this I'm able to like lift my head up and pull my shoulders back and do all that where I hardly even do that anymore because I feel so self-conscious about how I look I've already always fought with myself with feeling self-conscious and things because I, I have a bird chest right here bony and I I, I just am who I am, right? And we have all of our self critiques that we all make. And just having like a um, a lasting reminder on like, one, I made a dumbass decision. That was probably the one of the dumbest decisions. I'm the type of person that I do think sometimes when I'm upset, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ever sugarcoat anything. I might be a little bit irrational at times. That definitely changed that part of my personality because I did something that was like, irrational and like in one moment and two seconds later i now have a huge chest chest wound and um so yeah it changed like the way that i handle different situations as far as like how i handle certain conflicts um breach of boundaries things like that it's it's difficult for me and still and it changed the way that i express myself um it just, it did a lot. It did a lot. And that's what this painting is going to be about. So, um, I let my daughter start on this painting this week. She started putting some things on it. And the idea with this is that it's going to look like this, basically. I did a painting similar to this when I lived in New York before, but basically I want the painting to look like this. And I have my arms on it like that, but it basically it'd be my chest. And this whole side would probably be like a darker type thing one of this and it's like maybe it's like a yin yang i don't know i don't know um i don't really know what i'm gonna 100 percent do with it i get into my process while i'm doing it so that's what this painting is gonna be about it's gonna be about my chest the pain that i had surrounding it every everything that is like all of the scars that i have on my body that are lasting reminders are also on days that other things happen to so I guess that's just like my, I don't know, that's just like my thing that happens to me. Um, I don't know, but I appreciate you guys for listening and insert video. <laughs> so after this, you know how this goes, I'm going to show you guys the time lapse process of me painting my painting. And then once the time lapse process is done, then I will show you guys the final results. But Thank you for listening, and I love you most. So, let's get into it. I'm just picking up some music before I start. And I decided to go with the color purple because my favorite color has always been pink, but when I had Zofie, I decided that I guess her favorite color or my favorite color for her would be purple. And um, this, is, this time I'm using acrylic paint. Usually I like to use oil paint, but the purple that I found was just in acrylic and it was so pretty. So I decided to go with purple and acrylic paint for this one. And it's a little bit different of a process. And I slowed down some of the parts of the video just cause, I don't know, I think I like the way that my hair was moving and my body was moving. I wanted to give you guys kind of a little bit of different feels. Um, so yeah. Just filling in the background of this painting. That pretty much took most of the time. I had the idea that I wanted in my head for the most part, but you know, I had to make sure I could really get this background done. Hey, hey, hey. Listening to some music. I was listening to Chance the Rapper, and that's why I was bouncing around like this. <laughs> this is my favorite thing to do, you know? Listen to music, stim out, paint out, get it get it all out. This is my form of expression. No, so because if you don't get your paintings out, those paintings stay inside your chest. Stay inside your body. So yeah. Let's get into it more filling it up. I mixed a lot with water because like I said before, Sophie had done um, some drawing on the painting beforehand. So I didn't want to 100% make it covered to where you couldn't see the line work that she added to the piece before.
And normally, I don't mix, like, mediums. Like, this is crayon and then acrylic on top. And then I even put some oil in certain spots on it. And I usually don't do that, but, you know, this isn't, like, this painting's series is more so for me to express it and get it out. So everything doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm, it's more so about the process than it is about the overall outcome obviously i kept the overall outcome and it's all up pretty because i did it but um yeah i was less scared with these these pieces aren't like um i don't have my expectations for them i'm not trying to make them like oh just the best painting ever i think that i just i'm trying to accomplish my goal which is to paint my painting right All right, so now that I finally got all of the background covered, you see me going in with the black. So the reason why I changed the canvas around like that is because I kind of wanted the canvas to sit, on, like me to fit in behind. Kind of like those those things that you sit at the fair where you just put your head in and it's like a picture body underneath. That was kind of the idea of this. Um, the main points on my body where I have scars is where I came in and added that red oil paint that I mix with like the linseed oil just to make it have like a drip to it too um I just really like this piece I wasn't I wasn't really sure once I started doing the outline of it but as you see here I'm just taking it in loving it appreciating it accepting it I'm happy with it Thank you for watching my painting. I had to, the funny thing is I went to go make a adjustment to something, but my uh, paintbrush had dried. So honestly, no lines actually got added to that. But this is my painting. And I thank you guys so much for taking the time to get to know the story and understand what this means to me. I love you most.